We are sitting here on Festival Colors of Ostrava and we have a special guest here, Frederik Imbo. Uh, welcome to our show. Thank you. Hi, Jack. Uh, Hello, Christoph. I would like to introduce you just a little bit. Uh, correct me if this, there's anything wrong. So you are an expert in neuro-linguistic programming, uh, known also as NLP and communication. You are founder of InBurlink, which provides interactive training workshops and presentations to encourage personal growth. And you have also deli delivered Belgium most viewed TED talk um, on YouTube, and it has over 13 million views right now and you're also an actor in belgium mm -hmm. is that right would you add something to that no that's a very good uh, summary okay so um i'm gonna use one of your metaphors from the ted talk you've been talking you 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 talked about refereeing how you refereed to train your mind to not take things as personally well i would like to twist this metaphor a little bit and you know take this conversation and frame it as that we are a team together and we are trying you know to get to some point together why would that be beneficial for us to act as a team uh, in communication hmm what a nice question <laughs> if you're not an opponent if you're not a competitor from one another and you work together it means that instead of wanting to win you are willing to take into account each other's opinion feeling needs and point of views so if you're willing to do that then there can emerge a new kind of harmony and can even be inspiring for each other to take into account and to learn to take into account other preferences than yours mm -hmm. so um and uh you know you are a communication expert how did you come to be how did you come to be there what what was the decisive point in your life that you were like okay this is something interesting here i know that you know we are human so we have to communicate so uh what was the point maybe where it clicked and you were like okay this is interesting and i want to pr pursue this topic in my yeah. life first i did as you uh, said in the introduction i i did some acting school mm -hmm. So that was my job. I was acting on TV, on theater, on musicals. And I was also asked suddenly to do a bank robbery. Mm. Yes, wow. you Real? well. Real one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a simulation. <laughs> so there were people working in a gas station and they were trained by a company to react in, an, in a good way, in a constructive way to people who are doing a bank robbery. And so they needed an actor who would suddenly rah, appear with a gun. Rah. And I, I really thought it was a joke, like, huh, is this serious? Are you sure it's not hidden camera? And there for the first time I saw a communication trainer explaining to those participants if the bank robber enters, he wants to have full control. So for the first time I heard someone explaining about the psychology and the behavior of someone else and how to take into account the other person's behavior. And I was like dazzled and, and startled and very intrigued by uh, what are they teaching people. And so I was also acting in other simulations, in other trainings, for example, about assertiveness. Mm -hmm. And the trainer learned some tricks to people how to become more assertive, how to come up for yourself. And I was again dazzled. So you can learn this. Someone can teach you this. And because of that interest, I decided to study again a bit. And I, start, I started to study NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I went to the States to study nonviolent communication, which is based on the work of Marsha Rosenberg. And I got the training with him. It's a very big known if you talk about nonviolent communication. And so the more I was trained, the more I think I knew myself. And then I'm quite entrepreneurial person mm -hmm. so I decided you know what let's go for it and let me give um, uh, coachings and uh, mm -hmm. training sessions myself mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and why do you think it's important to not mm -hmm. to take things personally like in the 
context of, of this modern world and of this society. Why, why is it important for you? Mm. Let, me re let me ask a question back. Do you think it's important, guys, to feel free? Yes, depends what's defined as freedom, but yes. Exactly. What would you define as freedom? Wow. A <laughs> uh, really hard question at the beginning. <laughs> but uh, maybe to lower influences from your environment to the lowest possible level. Tell more, speak more. Like maybe uh, to take agency like in myself instead of uh, delegating it out of myself, outside of myself. So some kind of that I feel I'm kind of in control for streams that are coming to my personality and influencing my choices. That's the like that is the most that is the biggest kind of freedom I think we can take because on the physical and physiological level I think there is no freedom. <laughs> no free will. <laughs> no free will. No yes. free will. No free will. We, we don't believe in free will. This is the different term. Yeah. Guys, I already like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you why. Because if I ask most people, do you want to be free? Of course, everyone says yes. And then what is freedom? And then people declare like, I want to do whatever I want mm. to do. And so it means I want, I'm, Corona was a very good example. No, no, I want to do whatever I want to do. I want to go wherever I want to go. I want to smoke when I want to smoke. Wait, is this freedom? Going wherever you want to go, this is not freedom. This is addiction. <laughs> exactly. And so yeah. how you describe it yourself is the truth meaning, the true meaning of freedom. Because it means I want to, to create something in me so that the rest of the world has no big, big, big influence on how I personally react to it. It's a bit um, forced, but I like the etymological um, deconstruction of the word responsibility. It's the ability mm, to, to respond. To respond. Yeah. So how do you respond to what is done to you? This is freedom. And so if you want to have that freedom, if you want to live that freedom, it means that you should not take things personally. Because even, even when it, sometimes it is personal, but even then you should not take it personally. Because if I tell you, you are a jerk, it's personal. Or look, look at you sitting there with your microphone and all your silly questions. <laughs> it is personal. You should not take it personal because you can look at it from a distance. I can look from it from an anthropological standpoint and just saying, hmm, remarkable how he is scolding us, how he is doing this. And so when you're aware of the fact that I just try to uh, fulfill my need, for example, the need to judge you, to feel bigger and to make you smaller, if you see my need out of an anthropological standpoint, you could say, okay, well, it's better to not be thrown off balance because sometimes we are thrown off balance. You talk about uh, physical things. When, when we get hit by a train, well, uh, it will hurt. <laughs> so all the rest, we should really try against nature. I'm quite sure you know a lot about that. Against nature to see the natural response and say, okay, this is what nature makes us do. Now, what is my own response? Ability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And could you tell the positives, for example, like what it brings you if you stop taking things personally? And also, could you tell the negatives for the listeners if you keep, keep taking things personally? <laughs> if you keep taking things personally, you will be thrown off balance very easily and people will have power over you and it will cost you a lot of energy. And I really want to underline that I'm sitting here to explain how to do it, but at the same time to underline that I struggle with it every day on various occasions. I will not always say that I really take it personally, but 
I'm distracted, someone is coughing, it distracts me in a way. It's my natural response. But if I focus on it, if I start to uh, uh, focus on it and, and, and wanting to change what is surrounding me, I will get frustrated, I lose my independency, I get angry, and I'm not a nice person. Because I'm, ah, if I'm reacting like this, your autonomous nerve system will find it uh, strange that I do it this way and you will not feel welcomed. So in a very esoteric way to say, I will not spread love. And if I do not spread love, it's not nice for people to come into contact with me. So the advantage of not taking things personally is that you remain harmonious, you stay positive, you stay friendly, and you stay enthusiastic. You stay grateful and you're open for other people. You're a source of feeling welcome for other people. Yeah. I, I have two things here. One thing is I want to respond to the theme that we are talking about. It feels like we are going to, like, you... One, one uh, philosopher, Jose Ortega, talks about his Spanish philosopher. He talks about that if he talk about me or I, it's always I and my circ circumstances. It's always me and my, you know, uh, surroundings. And it feels like we are talking about not to get, um, you know, emotional about the circumstances much, about the first like stimuli you get from the person. Maybe if something even is personal, as you said, but go a l uh, one level higher and go into this meta perspective that, ah, okay, he does something to me, but now I have a freedom to choose, even if it's... It doesn't have to be real or not real. Just the process, like on the basic level, but just the process of me thinking and getting to that higher le level, meta level, I can choose, okay, he's, you know, personal at me, he's, I don't know, insulting me or something, but I can choose now to get uh, get on the train and be angry and stuff like that. Or I can be maybe calm. I can maybe ignore that and move on and, you know, don't have that person in my life if I can, if I have to, okay, I have to do something. And this is my second question and second point. It feels like a lot of these things can get toxic as well. In Like the toxic, I don't know if you are familiar with toxic positivity. I have to also, you know, respect my space and my boundaries. So how do you, like... How do you, you know, put those things together where there's some someone, you don't take it personally and you're like, whoa, whatever, I'm fine, you know, whatever. But then it stacks up. You have to, you know, you have to kind of defend your boundaries as well. And, and you know, you respect the other person, but you want respect back. So what do you do if it's maybe your, you know, colleague in work? You have to deal with it somehow and you don't want to burst on them in anger after some time because you were just pushing it down. So how do you move in that very, very, you know, um, it's really hard landscape to move around, I think. It sounds like it is a, how do you say that? Um, not a paradigm. A, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. One side, other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dilemma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dilemma. Yeah, yeah. If someone attacks you and is harsh on you, you should absolutely not take it personally, mm -hmm. even when it's personal. Does it mean you just have to let the other person do? Of course not. It's not either or, it's both. First of all, I will, I will explain this in my presentation in one hour. <laughs> we need to accept the things we cannot change. Mm -hmm. Everything that is in the past, so a remark that is given, is in the past. The remark is given. Someone making too much noise is in the past. They are doing it right now, right here. I cannot change it. So I must first accept it. If it is hard to accept, I start by saying, I accept that this is hard to accept. Wow. Sounds like uh, Marcus Aurelius and the Stoics <laughs> here. <laughs> exactly. So you say, okay, this is happening. Uh -huh. Okay, it's not nice, but I accept it. And I also accept the fact that I don't like it. I also accept the fact that I'm having resistance. Because if you fight against the resistance, then you get, yeah, you get a fight on a fight on a fight. Mm -hmm. And then you have to focus on what can I change? And then it's really important, the nonviolent communication stuff comes in. If I focus on 
this is something I cannot change. But what bothers me, there is a sudden need of me that has not been fulfilled. For example, respect. I would like to be treated with respect. You're insulting me. Hmm. My uh, need for respect is not being met. I can speak up. I can say, guys, you're calling me a stupid ginger. It feels a bit hurt, hurtful, so I'm a bit hurt by that. Would you rather call me Frederick? Otherwise, I, it's, it's difficult for me to continue this conversation. The more I speak about what I feel and what I need, now really important, guys, without blaming you, because from the moment you will feel that I put the blame on what I feel on you, you will not want to take into account my needs. So I increase the likelihood that you will take my needs into account when I take full responsibility for it. Full response ability for it. Again, there we have the word. So when I say, guys, come on, please don't, could you, could you call me something else? Or uh, are you angry? Or maybe I should first give you some empathy. Are you angry? Uh, does my way of uh, behaving or my hair color annoy you? Or do you have something, do you have bad experiences with ginger people? I don't know, please tell me. Then you could wind down. I should be very aware of the fact that I'm not responsible either for your feelings and needs. I'm just here to take into account your feelings and needs. Then real connection can emerge from this. And so the reason why we should not take it personally is that nonviolent communication, connective communication becomes a possibility. Because when I communicate out of taking things personally, then I will say, oh yeah, and do you really think that your color uh, is, is way better? Mm. Huh? And do you really think that you're smarter there? Jesus Christ, we are Belgium, we are Belgium, we are number one in football, and you Czech Republic, where are you somewhere? <laughs> so you see, I, I, will, I will go into my ego <laughs> and I will try to hurt back. Because I was hurt and I think, okay, an eye for an eye, mm. uh, two for two, and I will pick you as well. Yeah. It sounds like uh, some concept of uh, nonviolent, uh, radical honesty inside and out, like to, to yourself and for you to be able to communicate what's on your mind, what are your feelings right now, but some kind of courage to take it out to other people. Mm -hmm. And I really like it. I would like to talk here some practical because you were talking about creating this inner space for uh, accepting that you don't have to take things personally. What kind of strategies or practices do you think is helpful and especially helped you in the past on a regular basis what would you recommend to our listeners to do i will give a fast food strategy mm -hmm. and i will give a real healthy deep uh, constructed but more difficult strategy the fast food strategy is Try to look at it from the other person's perspective. I talked about this before. Try to put yourself in the other person's shoes and think out of which need does the other one do what he does. He ignores me. Okay, maybe he finds my presence too dominant and he wants to, space, to have space for himself. Okay. Maybe he's angry at me and he wants to punish me for something that I did that I maybe even do not know. He wants to punish me. So even this is a positive intention. There's always a positive intention. So, for example, um, when I'm a referee and they, they yell at me, you're a loser, you're a disaster, a disaster, they do it out of the ego need to win. And if they are losing because the other team made uh, a goal or I made a, a decision they don't like, they want to take revenge by shouting something nasty at me. So from the moment I look at it from the, the other person's perspective, um, there's a big chance or a good chance when I'm a quite balanced person that I will no longer take it personally. For example, your girlfriend says to you, your boyfriend says to you, listen, Uh, you never tidy up, your stuff is uh, lying around everywhere, you're a real slob. It's maybe not nice to hear this, but it's clear what is her need. What do you think her need is at that moment? Some attention maybe, some, some space where she feels safe. Yeah, uh, you're a real slob, you never tidy up. What does, you, what does the other person want? 
well, for you to do something to clean. To clean. Yeah. So she needs help. Yeah. Ah, she yeah. needs yeah. support. Yeah. And she needs order and cleanliness. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you don't like the way she speaks, mm. but at least you can understand, okay, they do it in this way. Marsha Rosenberg calls this beautifully, it's a tragic expression of an unmet need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So let's look at hooligans, let's look at uh, terrorists and see their tragic expression of unmet needs. Mm -hmm. If this does not help, which is sometimes the case, for example, I'm driving, uh, but there's a guy driving behind me, he's tailgating, he's flashing his headlights. I know he does it because he's in a hurry, but I think, don't do this. I do my best. Then I'm in touch with something that is truly about me. So the first strategy, it is not about me. It's about the other person's unmet need. Here, it's clearly about me. So this means that there's a variety of possibilities that it has evoked a specific need in me that has not been fulfilled so many times when I was a child. For example, acknowledgements, wanting to be understood and seen for my good intentions, wanting to be valued. And as an adult, we can hope that we can value ourselves and hope that we do not necessarily need all the time the validation of other people. But okay, sometimes we are having needs that are not being fulfilled, that are themes in our lives, therapeutical needs. And so we need to understand this and see, okay, listen, my need for attention has not been fulfilled. I totally, um, I totally see it and I, I, I mourn about the fact that I need that attention from other people. Or it can be that it is about a, a value that is just crucial for me and I expect that everyone takes into account this value. For example, people throw garbage on the street. Believe me, there is nothing therapeutical in it for me. It's not related to me personally, but I just don't like it. And I sometimes take it personally. And that's just because then I see someone is doing something that is against my core values. Mm. So it's, it, it is always, there is always something in me that is being touched. Yeah. And then I need to take responsibility for it. I work on it. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is great. I think this is a lot of these things are kind of a high level because, as you said, you got to know yourself uh, a bit and that started this kind of, you know, way of life, basically. And I wanted to say a few things uh, to respond to those things you've said. These are also some of the mental models. Uh, for example... Not everyone acts with, you know, conscious bad intention. And this is Hanlon's razor that you can decide what the guy behind you is doing, why he's delegating and stuff like that. Well, he doesn't have a bad intention to hurt you, to, to do something bad to you. But you can say, okay, maybe his wife is pregnant. Maybe he's hurrying into the hospital. And these kind of things are like so amazing for me because I always, you know, I just uh, can come up with this mental model, Hanlon's razor, and I realize, oh, it's not a bad intention. It's just some circumstance that got him to this position that he does, and that's it. So this one, this is that's one thing. And the second thing I wanted to talk about is exactly I've said, I've, as I've said, you got to know yourself. Could you tell to our, uh, us and our listeners where to start? Like, you can only do, do, do things that you've talked about that uh, when you actually know how you feel, when you actually know what, what emo emotions are, you know, mm, heating up in you as someone is you know, approach, approaching or does something to you. What are the steps that everyone can do day by day because you know there's a lot of talking and we are really interested in the practical things that people can do to transform their, their lives actually not to it's nice to hear those things but who is like someone might be motivated now to communicate uh, in a different way how to get to know yourself difficult <laughs> difficult but simple Yeah, yeah, it's, it but always is. <laughs> simple but difficult. <laughs> yeah. Maybe something happens and you tell yourself, 
Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Right, right now, here, I'm okay. I feel okay. For example, two minutes ago, you stood up to check something with the... And I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> a little bit off balance. Yes. Okay, I, I, I feel that I'm a little bit off balance. Okay, that's all. I, I feel it. I feel it. What do I think? Uh, should I stop? Should I not stop? Should I continue? Okay. Um, what are my uh, needs? Oh, I, I, I need clarity. I want to know whether I should continue or not. And, and I need safety, emotional safety. So these are three questions that you can start with. What happens? What triggers me? Oh, it's the fact that he stands up and that I no longer have eye contact and I see that he's fidgeting with the camera. What do I think about that? I think, uh, did I do something wrong? And I think, should I stop or not? It's what I think. It's not what I feel. What I feel is an emotion. Oh, I feel off balance. I feel a bit insecure. I feel a bit nervous. It's feeling. Um, so also distinguish already this. If, if, if I ask people what do you feel and they, I don't know whether it works, how it works in, uh, in Czech language, but if in English, for example, you say, I have the feeling that well, whatever uh, you say afterwards, it will not be feeling because it will be a thought. I have the feeling that, try to, can you finish the sentence? I have the feeling that? <laughs> that I'm hungry. <laughs> that I'm hungry, it's not a feeling, it's a thought. Yes. I have the feeling that I'm hungry, no, no. What do I feel? Mm, hungry, that's possible in this case, yes. But I have the feeling that I'm hungry. No, it's an exception maybe. But I have the feeling it will rain, it's not a feeling. Because I can be joyful when it rains and it can, I can be afraid when it rains. So. What do we really feel? So it's a real true feeling. We have a list of words that explain our feelings. And then maybe next step, if you know what is your feeling, what is your need? I was talking about a need to a lot of people. They say, a need. What is a need? I have no clue. I have no idea what is a need. Well, let's compare it like this. You drive a car? Yeah. Okay. The lamps, the small lamps that are on the dashboard of your car, these are your feelings. <laughs> And they signal, bing, 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 bing. And there are just two kind of signals, green feelings and red feelings. A green feeling shows, hmm, my needs are fulfilled. I have fuel, the oil level is okay, my safety belt is okay, all my needs are fulfilled. So we call it green or positive feelings because they show, they signal that certain of my feelings are fulfilled. Okay, you're sitting down again, you're looking at me, you're listening. <sighs> I feel peaceful. Why am I feeling peaceful? Because I have my needs for attention and predictability met again. If, however, my lamp turns red, it shows, okay, I feel something to indicate that some of my needs have not been fulfilled. My need for clarity, my need for predictability, my need for emotional safety. And so here comes a trick. When you're aware of your needs, this question you must ask, who needs to fulfill that need, in my, in my opinion? When you think, well, uh, the other, of course. <laughs> they should respect me. Well, then for 100% sure, I lose my emotional independence. Because the other one apparently is responsible for something inside of me, which is... You lost the responsibility. <laughs> exactly. I gave it to the other person. I gave away the keys and I say, here, you're responsible, which is very dangerous. Yes. Let's pay attention. Even when we love someone, we say, oh, you make my life so beautiful. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. Because if the other one suddenly behaves differently, then you say, oh, yeah, you... you <laughs> you messed up my life. You made my life a mess. <laughs> so it's not really fair, but okay, let's, let's not keep all the romantic out of the life because it's not really romantic to say, I know that you love me, but you, can, I can, you cannot give me love. You can only be who you are. I have to create the love in myself. It's not really very, um, very uh, connective. So that, that, that would be the, the first step that I would advise to the listeners. What happens? What do I feel? Now, what do I think about it? What do I feel? 
and which is need? need is evoked by that. And last question indeed, who is in my opinion responsible for meeting my needs? And this is a really crucial one. We should really ask ourselves, do we really believe, not only theoretical, but also in practice, in, uh, in everyday life, that I'm responsible for, my, for meeting my needs myself? Which does not mean that I'm always the one who needs to realize it. For example, this huge uh, object, it's, it's too heavy, but if it was a bit less heavy, we could, we could carry it with three people as a team. We were a team today, right? <laughs> um, I can, I'm responsible for meeting my need to move this object, which does not mean that I need to do it on my own. I can always ask for some help. I'm responsible that my house is tidy up, but I can always help, ask the help of a cleaning lady to help me and pay her for this. When I need respect and I don't get it from my boss, I can always give respect to myself. I can always tell myself, Frederick, do you truly respect yourself here? Yes? Okay. Then I think if I have enough self-respect and enough self-love, I theoretically would be able, should be able to give it to myself. Can you please repeat the questions? Because I think that people really should write them down. Because yeah. writing helps us better understand and better remember and to put these practices into our real life. Of course. Question number one. What happened that triggered a sudden emotion in me? Two. What do I think about what is happening here? What do I think? What is my inner voice, my inner dialogue? Three. What makes me this thinking feel for what do I miss what is my need which need should be fulfilled in order to no longer feel what I feel and five how am I going to fulfill that need who is responsible for this need do I take the responsibility myself or do I look at the other person and blame him or them for not fulfilling my needs Beautiful. I, I really love it. And talking about other people, I would like to ask you, because you are also, if I'm not in misunderstood, you are also a trainer of effective communication. And I would like to ask you how to connect to someone. First of all, by doing what you're doing. I describe for the people who do not see you, you look straight in my eyes, you smile, and you take time. So my autonomous nerve system feels this as a signal of welcome. It might be that this exact same mimic of you makes someone else in this chair uncomfortable. And you're not responsible for it. You're just lucky, in a way to say, that I apparently like this way of interacting. Some people don't like eye contact. To them, it's way too dangerous. I can regret it because, for example, me, I really need eye contact, but some people don't like it. So let me give you, and I'm really sure that you don't know it, and I'm so grateful that I can hopefully give you this present. Try to visualize in front of you the word communication. You see the word communication. Ask yourself which three letter words do you see inside the word communication? What are the possibilities? Which letter combinations see you there? You do, do not need to puzzle. Communication. Do you have a guess? I, I can see commune. Three letters? Three letters. Ah, For me, ah. like the first, first word that appeared in, appeared in my mind ah. it was uh, art. Art. <laughs> art. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but then you need to puzzle. <laughs> you don't need to puzzle. Go. Let's start, let's start letter by letter. Come. Oh, okay. Come, possible? Come. Come means together with. It's Latin for, let, uh, yes. for but it's not this word. Uh -huh. But the word I'm seeking has exactly the same signification. So together with. <laughs> In the middle of the word. There is a cat. Cat. <laughs> there is a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a cat. A bit further. Uh, no, a bit, a bit earlier in the words, not cat, right in the middle. 
together with uni 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 and now the eye opener is in the order of the letters in the word uni it says you and i it does not say i and you otherwise it would have been come i nucation <laughs> it is not come i nucation it is come you nication so guys Wojtek, Christoph, this means if I want to take into account you and I can first check whether you are at ease or not, if I can first take into account how you are feeling, what are your needs, and only then I put myself on the foreground, then I will have a much better connection with you. For example, just feel it again. Wojtek, Christoph, simply the fact that I used your first names doesn't it feel like, hmm, nice? Yes. I actually said it to myself when you used it, and I was like, that's so nice that he, you know, used our names, he remembers our names, and so on. So, Frederick, thank you so much for that. It's Again, you do it with me now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> it was on purpose, yeah. Um, it, it, it's, this, this topic is um, really fascinating to me because we are talking a lot about feelings subliminal feelings and 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 things that people do and they are based on how they feel on their own basically if you were as you've said before balanced or something balanced person maybe or something like that maybe you would be on some side maybe there would be some you know anxious feeling or something like that and that would affect the vibe that you goes off off of you and that i say word vibe just because it's this subliminal feelings that we get from each other on not conscious level so i can feel that i vibe with someone because i don't know i i feel calm and maybe the other piece, pe person is calm too and we spontaneously gonna vibe to each other because we are both calm and what is fascinating about this is that through music through conversation through similar experiences through similar physiological experiences people bond to each other and their hearts and even brain waves synchronize this for me is just a <clears throat> mind-blowing thing and i just wanted to you know say it here because there is more to it that might then it might seem on a first you know first look there's a lot of deep things and deep science behind this actually uh, right now so christoph wants to say something so i yes. love him <laughs> and who's responsible is autonomous nervous system yes exactly yeah exactly and that that is the the new insights for me like if there is one thing for me that is totally so nice the moment i came here in ostrava with everyone who's involved in the organization and everyone who is involved in guiding, helping, interviewing me really takes their time to shake hands, to make that eye contact and to give attention to each other. And, um, okay, sometimes we forget to do so. We forget to greet each other, me too as well. Sometimes I ignore people like, okay, now this is not important. You never know who is behind that person. And so, to put it a bit in a funny way, I adore the penis principle. Hmm? What is that? Now I have your attention. Huh? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> the penis principle. Everything you give attention to grows. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> <It's>, ah. <laughs> great, great. Uh, you said the word insight, and it it really sparked sparked a flash flash uh, like flashlight in my in my eyes because we really love topic of insight, and I have read that you're trained in some method called insight discovery. Please <laughs> tell us more about it. I will, and I also want to come back on the autonomous nerve system because I was joking about the penis principle, but let's <laughs> keep the question about the autonomous nerve system because it's it's really very deep and. And this is so nice about life. You can talk about nonviolent communication. You can talk about uh, the autonomous nerve system. You can also talk about um, insights discovery. Okay. And penises. 
and penises. Yeah, we can we can talk a lot. I have no problem with that. But okay, insight discovery. It's a method based on the research of Carl Gustav Jung. Okay, and it's it's a simplification, and really important for me is it gives another puzzle piece to increase your self-consciousness and the awareness of how to interact with other people. It's based on two axes. I showed them so that people can follow a bit or they can just now Google online inside discovery. There is a horizontal axis that shows your preference on how do you charge yourselves up? What gives you energy? And there are uh, people, yeah, I maybe have to check now. Yeah, I'm, I'm counting. Yeah, okay. And I'm just acting now that I'm an introvert. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thinking, waiting, and I need a time in order to talk. So I need a time, I need a reflection in order to talk. Extroverts talk in order to think. Mm. They think out loud. I'm extrovert. I think uh, you are very introvert. Yeah, extrovert. I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm both ways. I'm You're both. both ways. Okay. I need. I need time alone to think. But yes, then, but everyone. But voilà. then, yeah, voilà. I really voilà. like to talk and think voilà. through voilà. talking. Voilà. It's not. It, it. It. It's not either this or this. It's like I always compare it with uh, our hands. You know, guys. Let's do an experiment. Uh, stretch out your arms. Stretch out your arms. And well, I, I will do it first for me. I will clap and then you fold your hands like this. Okay, three, two, one, clap, hop. It happens. Your one of your two thumbs is on top. Which one is it? Left. Right one. The right one and your left, left one. Okay, do it again. Three, two, one, bop, hop. It's the same one. Yes. How weird. Do you think, guys, Wojtek, Christoph, do you think you're able to manage to do it differently? Uh, yes, but very consciously and slower. Let's do it. Three. Two, one. Did you manage to do it differently? Yes. In a really weird way. Yes, voila. So it shows again that we have both capabilities, both preferences, really important word in inside discovery in us. We are both introverted and extroverted. When I have talked a whole day, I really want time for myself alone. Maybe the one at work who was the whole day in front of his computer does the opposite. He needs maybe to talk to somebody in the evening. The second axis shows us how do we take decisions. We can take decisions on two ways. We can or analyze, calculate, reflect rationally, or we can just hmm, intuitively feel it like, yeah, I need to go to that place. Well, I don't know why, but I just like it. Oh, I bought a new car. Uh, oh, yeah, I like it. I cannot explain. And the rational guy would say, yeah, but uh, uh, what is the size of your car? And did you check whether it can enter in your garage or not? And the emotional says, oh, no, I forgot to do that. <laughs> and also in couples, you see sometimes quarrels between the partners, like the rational guy says, but why don't you think before you act? And the emotional says, but yeah, don't you feel that I'm sad? And you see, sometimes we are getting annoyed by the opposite of who we are. And so we get four quadrants. Huh? We have here on top, left, introverted, rational, and we call it uh, the color blue. The colors are just randomly chosen, blue. Blue preference in ourselves because we have tendency to speak about a blue guy, a red mm. guy, a yellow or a green guy. There is no such thing as a yellow guy or a blue guy or a red guy. There's only such thing as at that moment, the preference of the other person is very factual information, is knowledge, is analyzing, is things must be in order. It or people who are interested in details. Um, checking five times whether things are okay. Looking at each other, I see that you recognize yourselves in this. So if you talk, and here it comes, I, I put it in practice, here it comes the interesting part. I don't care whether someone is blue, yellow, green, or purple. I'm interested in, in what preference is the other one right now. Normally we are somewhere in gray, in gray. 
But suddenly your behavior can change because out of stress, maybe out of the autonomous nerve system. And you will say, yeah, but um, how long uh, will this uh, interview take? And uh, uh, how is food arranged? You see their needs that are blue needs. At that moment, the baddest response, and that would become eye nucation, would be, hey, don't worry, we will find something. Because I should worry. Your questions show very clearly that you want clarity, that you want to have uh, um, uh, some structure in your day. So instead of saying, don't worry, I should tell you, so Wojtek, you really would like to know when and where you can eat so that it's, uh, everything is, is, is well organized. And then you would, your autonomous nerve system would again relax like, yes. <laughs> so empathy is the thing we need all the time, all day long. If we want to connect with somebody, we should take into account the other person's feelings and needs, which is not necessary to always give in. I can even say to Wojtek, Wojtek, I see and I hear that it's really crucial for you to have food on time and to know in advance where we will eat and how long the interview will take. And then I can go to me, come you, communication by yeah. saying, I have no clue. I have nothing prepared. I'm really sorry to disappoint you there. And I really uh, would not like to fix a sudden moment to eat. So taking into account the other person's feeling is just in the language in the language, in the words we use, it does not necessarily need to be done in practice. I do not need always to adapt myself to you in reality, in my behavior, but in my communication, I do. Mm -hmm. I have to show that I'm aware of it. Imagine you hate, it, it does not only work on, on the colors, it also works on, um, on, on whatever, racism. The other one says, I hate uh, strangers. Or for example, I'm gay and someone says to me, uh, I hate gays. It's, it's dirty. Okay, if I want to communicate with you better, I should not say, oh yeah, and how many gays do you know? You don't know any gay. And then you will feel not connected and you will go yes. into discussion. If I say, okay, I hear that you find it dirty. Why exactly do you find it dirty? And the other one will explain, well, I don't want other men to touch me. Okay, so actually you want to be sure that your uh, physical integrity will not be harmed, right? So you want me to keep distance? Is that what you want? Yeah, because all the queers are the same. Oh, you had bad experiences. So again, I put you central. Mm -hmm. I talk about what is alive in you. I talk about your feelings, your needs, and so on. So let's go back to the colors. Blue, rational, introverted, factual, um, calculation. Um, things must be right. That's their life motto. Red, I want it now. Give me efficiency, give me results. Come on, move on. Ah, why doesn't that work? <laughs> the the, the, the uh, number one feeling of blue is fear. The number one feeling of red is anger, irritation, frustration, because things do not go fast enough. Life motto, I want it now. But I'm now. <laughs> voilà. You yes. recognize this? Yeah. Yes, that's such a that's such a useful that's concept. So cool. Like really, wow. and you. I've never heard of it. No, no, no. really. You, really you cool. just described our personalities basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue red. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, blue red. It's, it's the tendency that we have, and it's especially. I just want to say to listeners and to everyone, it gets worse when someone is irritated a little bit. It gets worse when someone is a lower energy. He doesn't have time. He doesn't have. He's much more sensitive to all those things, and the worst part is. And that's ah, I have such a cool concept for it's it's um, make to work on partnerships, but it can be used in like friendships, it can be used in colleagues and in everyone. And just the fact that people are aware of their energies, of their sensitivities, of the where are they on the field, uh, they can say, okay, I'm I'm like fifty percent of my energy, and I'm really like sensitive today, so maybe we shouldn't you know, get into this uh, area or argument or stuff like that. And the other person says, okay, I'll, that's that's cool. You know, I'm 80%, so it's fine. I'm going to take some responsibility in our partnership or something. And cool, we're going to, you know, move it to tomorrow or something. Or they both say, ah, oh, we are 20%. Okay, let's not do this. Or they say we are both 19%. Okay, we can go into this kind of a 
maybe a little bit um, you know harder topic and explore it together because we are both you know fully energized we are not sensitive and we can we have the responsibility and you know to take action maybe or to uh, account for the feelings that we have and stuff like that so I think this is really important because this solves so many problems so many problems are not that we are different we know that we are different but it's because we don't have the energy or we are too sensitive for something happened in the work and bam stuff like that like imagine you slept bad yeah 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 imagine you have physical problems imagine you uh, have one setback after the other and you're uh, just got a phone call with bad news mm. well then try to adapt the concept communication <laughs> good yeah. luck it will not be yeah. communication it will be come i Nication, like me and me. Nuke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nuke, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, uh, what do you like? We are gonna, I think, uh, like faster questions now a little bit, uh, and we are gonna. Uh, you don't have all the colors, you right? Huh? You know it, huh? Huh? You don't have all the colors up till now, huh? You have blue, red. Yes. You miss yellow and green, huh? Okay. Okay. Very fast. Yeah. Okay. What? What are? Yellow, yeah. enthusiastic, positive, okay. creative, open, yoo-hoo! Yeah. Very yeah. difficult for blue, yeah. because blue wants everything predictable, and yellow wants everything here and now. Let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, in, uh, let's uh, work together, involve me. And green is the opposite of red, which is very empathetical, very patient, mm -hmm. very sensitive, very taking into account other people, where red only thinks about himself, the green part in us wants to take others into consideration. Voila, now we have them all Crazy. Four. Thank you so much. This concept is really cool. Uh, what do you think or believe that not many, many other people, uh, that many, many other people don't? What is your belief that not many other people share with you or the majority of people uh, share with you? I'm asking myself whether I take some risks or not. <laughs> <laughs> I take some risk. Go for it. The one without risk, because I will not har harm someone, is that I believe that is uh, that I'm a soul, and I'm in this life, this person, to learn the lessons I need to learn in order to develop myself in a more loving soul. That's the number one. Beautiful. Second thing, I believe that every person, whatever he does or did do, deserves love, understanding, friendship. Even when people killed someone, they deserve uh, love and friendship. And for example, a um, question that I sometimes use during a workshop and ask people to go into Paris to have one who is a believer of the statement and the other one who is against the statement. So pro and cons of the statement. And the statement that I am very pro is if your best friend tells you that he or she, mostly he, is sexually attracted to children, you can still be friends with that person. Almost every group, I cannot do the dialogue because 95% of the people raise their hands to say, no, 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 I cannot be friends with that person. Of course, to me, it's also important that these people don't do what they want to do with children. But even, even if they did, I can, I can truly see they must be protected, they must be even punished, they must be treated. But even then, why should they not deserve love, friendship, understanding? I cannot understand this. Uh, this is so, imp like, you've raised a really something, if it involves children, people get so, there's like no question, you can't talk about this at all. I love it that you bring this up because it's about a debate, it's about that people talk about it. Because in our world, if free will doesn't exist, for me, free will doesn't exist, well, I could have been that guy. I could, I didn't choose it. Like, I, I was just lucky. I was just super. lucky. Ah, so super. It's yeah. super what you say. Yeah, so I have empathy. I have empathy and I think other people should have too. I think it's really hard if it involves children. I think it's our human instinct. But I think there is a space and time to open up this debate and the same thing is about prisoners and stuff like that it sam harris uh, is talking about this in such a nice way that it only involves things that are into the future we shouldn't harm the people 
for what they did, but protect future the society and stuff like that. So yeah, we we can do whatever it takes to protect the society, but it's not involving punishing people for something what they did. It's just protecting them and people around them and the society and stuff like that. it's it's um it's a topic for another hour but this is thank you for this and yes protect the society don't let anyone do anything horrible to children obviously but also we can have empathy because they were also children where they were born and you know if you look at some i don't know killers murderers you look in, into the brain and you see some uh, damaged uh, parts and they're like they're not themselves for example they say it in their suicide notes they're i'm not myself i you need to check my brain and they find thing that you know was pushing uh it's on their brain and stuff like that so it's yeah that's just example of not having a free will <laughs> do you have some kind of uh, red pill insight have you, have you seen matrix the movie no no Okay, so like the, <laughs> the red pill, the red pill is basically something you can't take back. So, for Wait, example, sure. you realize something; it really blows your mind. For example, you don't have free will. How how you will take uh, take this information? What is some information that blew to your mind that it was some kind of wow moment for you? So many. We were we have been talking about the most of it. Um, I think. The red pill, first of all, thank you for giving it a name. The red pill for me was uh, everything that has to do with the polyvagal theory. My God, what was this? Stephen Porges. Yeah. Like, oh, now I understand why sometimes I'm frozen, <laughs> why I have no access to intimacy or why I cannot uh, bear the fact that Walter, my boyfriend, uh, is touching me, is, uh, is holding me. Ah, oh, now I can understand it. Why sometimes I block? Why? I get so angry. Oh, yeah, it's my autonomous nerve system. So maybe to explain a bit, um, our autonomous nerve system via our uh, senses is scanning the environment always to check whether we feel welcome or we feel threatened. When we feel rejected, we will protect ourselves and we will shoot in our amygdala by reacting violently by fighting, this is my number one, Arr! judging, wanting to be right, uh, reproaching someone, <sighs> looking at somebody in a in a in a in a hard uh, in a hard way, like I want to punish you, like <sighs> giving you this judgment, and uh, it can also possibly possibly freeze. Sometimes I'm I'm I just freeze. The the problem is also a good insight is that freezing, which is dorsal vagal immobilization looks the same as ventral vagal immobilization it it, it looks the same because uh, I can look at you and nod and I can I can give the idea that I'm uh, connected but without knowing it it can be that I'm frozen that I'm in a froze uh, freeze state so this is also really important if you ask people what do you feel and they say oh relaxed and joyful then i'm for sure not frozen but if i say uh uh yeah i'm here uh, <laughs> yeah uh, what do you want to know then it's a, a big chance or a good indication that someone who normally would feel something does not feel anything he's in freeze so that was my red pill nice thank you for polyvagal theory frederick do you have meaning of life is the question we ask all of our guests do you have meaning of life? Do you have meaning of life? Uh, it's a yes-no question, so I would say yes. <laughs> what is and what is, what is it? <laughs> try to be, try to be a as loving person possible. Yeah, beautiful, Frederick. Thank you for this empathetic conversation, for what you brings to this world, for what uh, you are educating people about, and. This time was absolute pleasure for me. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. We are going to record. You know, there's so many topics that we can explore still. So maybe we can connect through online world and uh, record another episode in the future. That would be great. All right, all right awesome. It thank you, guys. Pleasure to meet you. And thank you for listening to our listeners and watching on YouTube as well. Have a great day. And, you know, follow us on socials and stuff like that. Bye. Brain VR. Thank you.